Flossmas day 22, everybody. 22, day 22. Uh, today's gonna be another quiet day. I've got uh, some errands to run. <laughs> I've got a dog to walk. Um, I got a text from the music store where I ordered Nicholas's, no, Lisa from Hawaii sent me a pronunciation guide for this, for, and I'm gonna say it how I say it, how I've always said it, which is ukulele, which is how everybody around me here in Canada says it. However, when somebody from Hawaii tells you how to pronounce it properly, I think that's kind of special. So I think Lisa says that it's ukulele, ukulele. So it's in and I get to go and pick it up today. So they opened at noon, so they should be just open. I'm also gonna make that bouillabaisse for dinner tonight as a nice Sunday night dinner. And I'm missing a few ingredients. I need a green pepper and I didn't check the pantry for onions, but I have a funny feeling I'm out of onions as well. So I'm gonna stop at the grocery store and it's kind of on my way to the music store. So it's sort of a little circle if I plot my route. I shouldn't be able to, I shouldn't have to take too long to be out today. It doesn't sound overly busy out there today. Um, it looks like traffic's moving quite well. So that bodes well. Maybe everybody else has, has finished their errands nice and early today as well. So a couple of quick thank yous before I show my stitching for today. I received two things in my mailbox and they they would have come in on Friday, but I didn't check the mailbox on Friday. I checked it just yesterday. Um, and two special surprises in the mail for me. The first one was from Marlene, Stitching by the Lake. And I know many of you know Marlene because her channel is just lovely. She is lovely. She's always enjoyable to watch. And Marlene had sent me a message a while back when we were talking about tea and I had mentioned I didn't like green tea but there were lots of other teas that I did like and Marlene said oh well I have this cinnamon plum tea and you, I think you'd love it and I'll send you some and I said oh yes please that would be really nice and so Marlene sent me some tea so she sent me this really sweet really pretty card that came with the tea I just you can see it's a beautiful angel lovely and then inside the package she she sent it in a gift bag how pretty is that it must be Santa's truck <laughs> I love this so I'm going to repurpose this this year at Christmas time and put it under my tree with a gift for someone else so inside here she's it's a loose leaf tea this uh, it's called Rishi I hope I think I'm pronouncing that properly Rishi cinnamon plum and so that's can you read that there and she even sent me the instructions on how to steep it now, I drink quite a lot of loose leaf tea so I did have a strainer um, but Marlene also I think she thought in case I didn't have a strainer she included the sweetest the sweetest little uh, look look at the top of it it's got a little flower on the top and so this plugs into the strainer so that you can hold this and then pull that out of your cup but I think somebody in the post office must have put something really heavy on top of the package because the tea strainer got smushed so and it, oh also came with a little um, lid so that when you're when you after you pull this out because see this does this does still fit in the top because it's so cute look at that there so that's how it would come out and then as you pull your tea out you would have a place to rest it on so I'm gonna see if I can have John um, use his tools and put this back into shape and see if maybe I can I can fix it so that I can still use it however I had <laughs> I have an old <laughs> ugly stained uh, tea strainer so don't look too quickly but I had one so I used that to brew a delicious cup and really Marlene this tea is amazing it was so good I went online and um, I can actually order it to, and have it shipped to Canada that's how good it is I think it's gonna be worth it it's absolutely 
absolutely delicious. And the color that it turns, the, this, this vibrant pink color, just makes you feel pretty nice. So Marlene, thank you so much. That was really kind and delicious. The second thing that was sent to me was sent anonymously. Now, I have since figured out who sent it to me, but I'm not sure that she wants me to tell who it is. So I'm just gonna show you what she sent because I may have gotten a little bit misty-eyed when I opened this package. So it was just a small package, uh, no letter, no nothing, sent directly from the company that made it. And I opened it up and this is what was inside. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> it's just, it's so touching. I just absolutely love it. And to my friend who sent it to me, and you know who you are, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I already ha actually had it hung on my tree and I had to take it back down to, uh, to share it with everybody today. So, um, okay, so my stitching, let me show you what I've been up to. I had said on Friday night that I wasn't going to sleep until I finished the rooftop cocoa shop. And I should know better. I should know better than to say things like that because then when it doesn't happen, I feel so guilty and like I can't come clean about it that once again, I didn't do what I said I was gonna do. But what was I thinking? There was so much stitching left to do. I even, I even stayed up, I stitched I didn't go to bed until about one o'clock. Now, I'm not necessarily a slow stitcher, but I don't think it's gonna come as a surprise to anyone that I am a distracted stitcher. And so, I may have been on Facebook, I may have been on Instagram, I may have been watching Flosstube, I may have been watching Vlogmases from knitters that I like to watch, and I may have been watching Bernadette Banner, who is a historical costume um, researcher, maker, designer, just all around fun person to watch. I can't do anything when I watch Bernadette Banner because I literally cannot take my eyes off the screen. I find her endlessly fascinating. Uh, I will put a link to her channel below, just in case you also find her. And I don't do the things, like I don't sew historical costumes. I just find her engaging and just really fun to watch and listen to. And very, very smart, very smart. Um, okay, so, are you ready? <laughs> Rooftop Cocoa Shop. It's not quite finished, but I have stitched uh, I completed the sign, all of the hot cocoa mugs, and the mistletoe. So all that I have left, oh, and I also did most of the snowflakes that are below the, uh, the sign. Most of those snowflakes are now complete, so those are done. So all I have left to do is there is some garland at the top, and then some ornaments that hang down from the garland, and then there's a moon, a crescent moon that hangs up here. And that's all I have left to stitch on this and then it's finished. So, famous last words, I do intend to finish this today, but I'm, I am not going to be making any more promises. And that way I won't feel bad about myself if it doesn't get done. So that's okay. So that is uh, for my stitching. For my knitting, I did start the heel flap on my father-in-law's sock. Um, I haven't gotten very far. However, I haven't done any other knitting other than that because I really do want to get that heel well on its way. So I will be also doing some knitting tonight. So I will share my progress on that with you tomorrow. Uh, so before I head out the door to the grocery store and the music shop, I just wanted to take a moment and, and briefly talk about yesterday's both yesterday's video and the comments on yesterday's video. Um, so I'm not going to talk about my mother-in-law a lot face to face because I 
I get a little bit emotional because I, I miss her. Um, but you know, I think that I just wanted to say thank you for everyone who left me a comment, who took the time to share who they were missing, who you are missing this year. This time of year can feel a little bit melancholy at times for many of us. And when we see people being cheerful and joyful and happy and the season is bright and, and it is, it is, it's a wonderful time of year. But I think that there is always that, that layer of a little bit of sadness, a little bit of melancholy because we know what we're missing and we're all missing someone. We're all missing someone or, or a few people, you know, or many people. And I think that we all share that in common. So no matter how happy we are or appear to be or joyful or cheerful or festive at this time of year, and we are, but I think it's totally normal to have that little feeling of melancholy. That's the best way I can describe it. Just a little hint of, boy, I wish they were here too. And so for you to share your stories with me in the comments, it meant a lot. And I hope that if there's anyone watching this who is feeling the same way, feeling a little sad, feeling very lonely, if you would like, to go and take a little peek in those comments from yesterday's video and read through them. And when you see that there are so many other people who are missing people, who you know desperately wish they could just spend a little bit more time with loved ones who are now gone, it makes you feel not quite so alone. And it's, um, that's kind of, it's, it's hard to describe but just not feeling alone makes it a little bit easier. So thank you, thank you, thank you for everyone who left me very kind comments yesterday. Kind and thoughtful and, and heartfelt and for telling me your stories as well, so thank you. Okay, so uh, I said this was gonna be short today but I think I'm still over 10 minutes. So I am going to go and put my coat on, take the dog out for a quick um, recess break, put her in her crate, and then quickly go and pick up the few things that I need to do out around town, and then come back, and I've got some chores to do this afternoon, as usual, some more cleaning, some more laundry, um, and then maybe I'll start dinner preparations a little bit early. Because it's a bouillabaisse, it can sort of, uh, you know, just simmer for a while, so I can just prepare everything and then let it sit while I maybe go and have a coffee and knit a few rows. So this is it for me today. I might put a little bit more footage in of um, picking up the ukulele and then uh, I'll share that with you and I'll see you tomorrow. Also, I'm going to, I will have put up the, the recipe for the blue base that I'm gonna make tonight. So if you're interested in that, I'll make sure that it's clear um, and then I'll put it in again at the very end as a photograph at the end of this video. And so all you'll need to do is just let the video play through and then once you hit that recipe, just hit the pause button if you're interested. I haven't made this. I keep meaning, I have been making meaning to make this since I mentioned this cookbook. This is the Harrowsmith cookbook that I talked about a few months ago. I've been meaning to make this recipe since then and I haven't. I even bought the cod um, and it's been in my freezer for two months. <laughs> so It's time to finally make it. I have a little bit of time later this afternoon. I'd like to make a special dinner. So I'm going to prepare that and hopefully it's as good as I remember. And I haven't led you all down the garden path. So that's it for me today, Flossmas Day 22. And I will see you tomorrow for Flossmas Day 23. Take care and happy stitching.